now you are listening to Dr. Troy Munson with words of radiance. Now here is your host, Dr. Munson. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Troy Munson. This <laughs> this should be a comforting podcast to some. Those of you that have been on the spiritual journey for a while, I'll get questions by some folks that I'm coaching, and they'll have inevitably this question of, I'm stuck. Uh, how do I grow? Even those beginning in, this, in the early, early stages of spiritual development can ask the question, how? How do I do it? What do I do? And of course, the simple answer is, it's really up to you. And while that is a cop-out answer, it is also meant to be very open so that those of you that are at this point, we don't, we don't want you to depend on something or someone, even if you've been listening to me for a while and you're depending on even the words that I unpack. Eventually inside you, you're going to find out that there is that still small voice that there is that leading, most loving voice that you've ever heard that is simply walking you through. Now, along the way, you can stop and smell the roses sometimes for quite some time. Some people find that I have been at the same place for 10 years, 20 years, 40 years. I think of Moses in the desert for 40 years. I remember when I began my spiritual walk and I had read that, I kept thinking, my gosh, don't let me don't let me stay stuck for 40 years. And of course, what I didn't understand is it, it was up to me. And I can do as much or as little. I can let go or not let go. I can resist or not resist. I can stay attached or not attached. I can literally move as I wish, as fast as I wish, or as slow as I wish. And so I hand you that understanding so that there is a bit more ease, but at the same time, it is a double-edged sword. If you are not moving and you feel stuck, guess who decided to be stuck? You're right, you did. And so the question that begins, well, I don't think I want to be stuck anymore. I think perhaps maybe... I'll decide to move again. And then it is all up to you. And as you open yourself up to truth, all of a sudden, the right things and the right situations and the right teachers will come along. Some of them you will recognize obviously. Some not at all. Some will be right next to you. Some will be whispering so softly that you cannot even scarcely hear them yet they're still drawing you ever further. If you found some profound message in something, whether you're listening to my podcast, whether you read a book, whether you saw a flower or a tree or a person or a situation, and it completely recontextualized your entire thought system in one fail swoop, and you instantly changed, you could say thank you to whatever that was or whatever that comment was or podcast or book or whatever or tree or you could simply acknowledge that you yourself had decided to be ready and to move and to not miss it because every moment of every day there are all of those things happening for you and when you're ready to see them you will see them so, of course, it's up to you. And so it's still up to you to choose to join with truth or with illusion. But remember that to choose one is to let go of the other. What does that mean, to let go of the other? It's not that you have to. You automatically will. So in this world, there are lots of delusions, and you could even dissociate your mind from certain things, though that is not the goal. 
well, I'm just tired of being angry, so I'm just going to dissociate my my brain from anger, and I'm just going to not entertain that anymore. But what more often happens is I'm not going to receive love in any way, shape, or form anymore, so I'm going to dissociate my mind from love, and I'm only going to experience anger. These are all common, but they are not, not the solution. They're simply another form of delusion. So we could go into the question of, what do I do then? What begins to be the ultimate goal is really to set that vision, that goal. And though you've heard me, if you've listened to my podcast, talk about not setting a goal. So we'll call it a vision. And really, it's not even a vision as much as it is what is truth. It is static. Meaning, well, isn't truth constantly changing? No, of course not. The truth is always true. It's very static. It's very, it's very not even black and white. It just is. And so as we set our eyes on truth, this is the truth that eventually most arrive at fairly quickly. I don't want any of the fear, of the guilt, of the shame, of the The stuff of this world, the lack, the limitation, the pride, the anger, the fear, the guilt. I I don't want any of it. And then as we let all that go and realize the vast majority of our thoughts tend to keep us where we are, as we let go of each individual thought and become aware that we're stuck or aware that we're unhappy or aware that we're angry, that is the first step to realizing, wait a minute, That's not what I want. And those that have been in dire straits or in really bad situations where we have almost a Stockholm type syndrome, now all of a sudden we can get quite twisted to where pain and misery is what we desire. And so that's not the purpose of this talk, but I at least want to put it out there that that is a very significant possibility in the world in which we live. But for the vast majority that have a home and a job and it seems that life can on occasion go our way and that we do have some creature comforts, but yet there's this general unhappiness happening, those are the ones that as we look at it, we're like, why am I so dissatisfied? What do I need to do? Where do I need to go? Do I need to change Houses, change spouses, change jobs, change states, change countries. What do I need to do? And of course, there isn't anything to do. There's only something to see. And so the seeingness that we really need is that, ah, apparently I'm stuck. And as we see something so simple, so obvious, then the next step needs to be, I am the one that is controlling my stuckness. I am obviously resisting moving somewhere new. Then let me just be with that resistance and that stuckness both without wanting to change it either and just let it be there and see what happens when I just let it be. Because when I do that, ultimately, I'm now getting to the state of releasing judgment on something that I really don't want. And now I'm not letting these illusions actually block me. And so ultimately, I can now disidentification with what I'm experiencing and now move into a state of pure peace if I wish. And so as we let go of each of these things, our help comes as needed. And that helper is right there all the time. So I don't want to be exhaustive here. I kind of almost want it to be a, a discovery process for you. An aha moment that you can look at and say, wow, it really is there. I remember being stuck many times on this journey over the last 20 years. And being stuck, I would simply just hang with it and just let it and not try to change it. Just simply continue the process of whatever the next thing I was led to do. I would not acknowledge the stuckness and saying, I am stuck. And so I encourage you as well, It is all about you, and it is still about you and your choice. You may choose any time, and it's okay. 
So with that, let me know how it goes. If you have some things where you're like, my gosh, I was totally stuck. And after I listened to this, it was, it was awesome. I got it. Thanks. And of course, these were things that others have said to me, and I was equally as thankful. And as they speak, even now to me, to you, to all of us, we all hear it as one, and it is a glorious, beautiful thing as we each let go in our own way and experience what we've experienced and take that with us into the complete sonship that we all belong and live this amazing, glorious life. And so until next time, we'll unpack it even more. And I'm Dr. Troy Munson. Mm-hmm.